Okay, so today's da Yomi is Vamatsia I am based Vamatsia 72. Today's da Yomi is dedicated for uh, Yeshua for Am Yisrael, a Shmir for the Chayalim, Matzah for the Shvuyim. We're going to start on I am Bez, Ahmed Aleph, three lunch on the top. The Bryce, it tells us, Tan Rabbanan Yisrael Shalava Mos. Let's say there was a non-Jew. Let's say there was a Jew who borrowed money from a non-Jew on interest. It's allowed. You're allowed to borrow money from a non-Jew on interest. But then after Kayim time, pay it back. The Jew said, I don't have the money. So he gave it to him then instead of the straight loan. So it started off as interest. So he said, I'll give you $1,000. Give me back 1100 Came time to pay the 1100 He says, give me 1100 He says, I don't have it. He says, okay, I'll loan you the $1,100. So now it's no interest anymore. And now the non-Jew becomes Jewish. When the skyer, the non-Jew converted. So im kodim shen iskayer, of the malva, if he made the new loan prior to the conversion, govesa karam, govesa rivis, then he can acquire the principal and also the interest. But if he did it, after he converted if he transferred the interest loan into the straight loan after he converted, then then he can only accept the principal but not the interest because the interest was after he became Jewish. And so then it was prohibited. And so to the reverse, let's say there's a non-Jew who borrowed money from a Jew, again, it's allowed. And then he, later on, he turned it into a loan. Viniskayer, and then the Nanju converted. If they turned into a straight loan before he actually converted, then Govas Akaran, Vigovas Aribis, then he collects the principal and the interest because it was turned into the whole interest thing happened before the conversion. But But if the conversion happened after. If the conversion happened after the after it turns into a loan, and then go a Karen, then go a Rivis, then he collects the principal, but he can't collect the interest because under those circumstances, because under those circumstances, hold on one second. And in those circumstances, the it was interest while they it was an interest loan while he, before he became uh, after he became Jewish. So then he can't collect the uh, interest. Rabbi Yossi says, Nachri shalov amos mi Yisrael beribus. Rabbi Yossi says, a non-Jew who borrows money from a Jew on interest, ben kach u ben kach goves akarim goves ribus. Even if he didn't turn into a straight interest-free loan until after the conversion, nevertheless, the Jew is allowed to always collect the interest. And Amar Rava, Amar Rav Chistam, Rav Huna, Allah Rav Yossi, the law is like Rav Yossi. And Amar Rava, my time with Rav Yossi, what's the reason for Rav Yossi? We don't want people to claim that this non-Jew converted in order to uh, basically make some more money and get out of the interest-paying loan. So therefore, since we're worried that people are going to attack this conversion, therefore, we don't want to let them attack the conversion. So we say that this that that either way, the Jew can collect the interest. So basically, we're saying that a Jew is allowed to collect interest from another Jew, so just so that they don't attack the, the conversion of the Jew. So let's say there is a contract which... There's interest written into it. Then we penalize the person who wrote uh, such a contract, which has interest on it. And not only are you not able to collect, uh, uh, are you not only are you not able to collect the interest, but you also can't collect the principal. That's the position of Divir No, okay, yeah, you can't collect the interest, but you could still collect the principal. My what's the nature of their dispute? Rameir Safar Kansina Natera Mishumisura. Rameir says the nature of the dispute is we penalize the permitted uh, aspect of it because of the prohibited aspect. This the rabbi say we don't penalize the permitted aspect because of the prohibited aspect.
Mara says, Tanan Hasam, we weren't over there in the Mishnah in we have this in the beginning of our tractate, but we also have it in Ksubos. Now, let's say you have a predated document. You say that the loan took place on January 1st, even though the loan really took place on February 1st, that's disqualified because when you create the loan, you create a lien on your properties. So if you're saying the loan took place before the date that it did, then you have a, a loan on a pre-exist, you have a lien on a, on a, you have a document that says that there was a lien on the document on the property before there was actually a lien. And that's disadvantaging the the, the people who brought the properties from January to February. But if you want to post-date it, where in that case you're only you're only disadvantaging the purchaser and the seller, this the people involved in that transaction, you're only you're only disadvantaging the guy who sold his property. That's going to be okay because he's allowed to do that to himself. Mukdaman Amaipsu. And so the Gemara says, but why is this predated contract disqualified? Need to govern Mizman Rishon. Okay, granted in this case where he went uh, where he where he where he sold the the property on February first and they said he sold it on January first. Granted, they can't go back and collect it from January first. But still, Nigbu means Manchini, but let the, let the people who are making a claim, let, they, let them collect all the property from February 1st. So, Amar Abishim ben Lakish ben Machokish Nuyah. No, this is, this Mishnah is actually a dispute. And our Mishnah reflects the position of Rabbi Meir. And, but he, and Rabbi Meir says, Kansina Tera Mishim Isur, that we knocked out the whole document because of the part that was done wrong. Whereas Rabbi Yochanan says, no. You could even say that this mission is like Rabbi the Rabbanan. I feel the Rabbanan We're concerned that maybe they'll use this document to come and collect from the earlier date. So therefore, we cancel out the whole document and say it's disqualified. Gemara has a story here about some tricky business people, and uh, they did some tricks against each other. Who gavra the pardiso So there was a man, and he wanted to borrow, let's just make this uh, uh, a nice number. He says, I want to borrow a million dollars. And as a collateral, I'm going to give you my orchard. I'm going to give you my field. So he gave, so Shimon gives his field to Ruvain and Ruvain lends Shimon a million dollars. So now Ruvain has the field. And Ruvain's using that field for three years. Now the law is of that if you have a property for three years and nobody and you consume the fruits of the property and nobody makes a claim, then you can claim it's a, that you're a squatter and that it was your property and not, and so therefore the other person doesn't say you have to produce the the contract because you don't have to watch a contract for three years. But this guy who had the property as a collateral only, I mean after he ate it for three years, he said, Ruben says to Shimon, Imizab Nisla. Anyway, Mutav, sell me the property. If you're going to sell it to me, all well and good. V'ilo, but if you're not going to sell it to me, Kavishno Elishtar Mashkanta, yeah, I have a document on you saying you owe me a million dollars. But if you don't produce, if you don't sell it to me, I'm going to get rid of that document. And I'll say that this was just something that I own. I own this real estate. And then what are you going to do? Because you can't make a claim. So basically he was forcing him to sell it. So the the person, Shimon, who gave the field as a collateral, he was no dummy. What did he do? Also come acne with no cotton. So he got up and he gave it to his, he, before he went and sold, Shimon sold the field to Ruvain, quote unquote, sold it. He gave the field to his younger son, in front of witnesses, thereby demonstrating that he had ownership over it. Other Zabn in the way. Then he goes back to Ruvain and sells it to him. And then uh, he he basically got his field. But then he basically, at that point, he got the money from Shimon back that he had given as a uh, that he had given the field. So basically, at that point, he sold the field to Shim, to Ruvain. And so Ruvain demonstrated it was a sale, but now he proves that you couldn't buy it because, because it's my son's. And so thereby he showed that Ruvain uh, didn't really own the field. So the Gemara says, Zabina vada huave Zabina. This sale from Shimon to Ruvain is for sure not a good sale because Shimon had given the property with intent to his son. But the question is, Zuze Kamalva Bishtar dummy. 
the Gov of Minachas and Mishabadim, O Dilma Kamel Val Pedamo, the Enoch Gov of Minachas and Mishabadim. But the question becomes okay, so the sale is clearly not a good sale. But now let's say people want to come and make a claim this money that uh, that Reuven gave to Shimon for this. Uh, for this uh, for this property that he bought, which was not a good sale, do we say that that money that he gave is it like a loan on a contract? And so, therefore, if people want to make a claim against that loan, they can go and collect that money from Nechasim Mishubadim, meaning to say they can collect it even from property that there was a lien on it. So. So therefore, do we say under these circumstances that 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 this is basically uh, a debt that's on a on a contract, and so therefore it's on a property, and so therefore the people can go and collect it uh, with a lien on the property, or do we say that it's like an unsecured loan, and therefore since it's an unsecured loan, can't be collected from uh, from lien property? So the Gemara says. Isn't this exactly the case of Rabbi Yossi? What did Rabbi Yossi say? On top of 72b, that if a person admits to a contract that he wrote, like let's say there's a borrower, and the borrower says, yes, I borrowed that $1,000, then he, the contract doesn't need to be certified. It's for sure a valid contract. The government of Chassim Meshubadim. And so therefore he has... So he's basically admitting to the money that the lender owes him, and the lender could go in and take from lien property. So to also here, so basically the lender, in this case the seller of the uh, pro- the person who sold the property, he's admitting to it, and they could collect the money from the chasam shabadim. So he could collect it from lien property. So it says Rafa me dummy. The two cases are totally different. Chasam nitanli kasev. There the contract. He's saying it was supposed to be written. He says, this was my loan, and I'm certifying it. This contract was not supposed to be written. So, by the way, I want to just say that Rebelli Melech of Hashem, the Nomali Melech, says that this statement, he understands it metaphorically. It means if somebody admits to a, a contract that was written upon him in heaven, if heaven it says about him, you've done something wrong, once you admit, then the punishment doesn't need to be upheld. Meaning to say that if a person wants to repent, the first stage a person needs to do is to admit that, admit their wrongdoing, and then the punishment in heaven will be will be um, diminished or or canceled. So so anyway, Rava says that this argument, yes, and Narema Rakamra So Narema was sitting and he repeated this teaching of of Rava, that if the contract was supposed to be written, then we're going to say you could collect it from the Chassam Meshubadim if you admit to it. But if the contract was not supposed to be written, then you can collect it from the Chassam Meshubadim, from the lien property. So Marimer was sitting there and he said this teaching in front of Rav, uh, in, in front of Ravina. So Ravina said, What about the fact that we say that an earlier, a predated contract is no good. Because maybe you'll collect from the earlier document, but why? It should it should be a different reason why it's no good. Name If this contract was not supposed to be written at all, she says the two cases are not the same. There, that contract was supposed to be written, but wasn't supposed to be written from the earlier date. It was supposed to be written from the later date. But this document was a fraud. It wasn't supposed to be written at all. So the Gemara says so it's the following brisa that proves that 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 is a question against uh, Rava because it says in the following case that we say that if a person uh, uh, has property which is being claimed uh, from somebody that he's that the uh, purchaser that. Uh, 
the, the, if somebody stole property and he sold to somebody else and then you go claim the property, you don't have to pay for the improvements uh, that the purchaser did to the real estate because then nobody would ever buy anything if if you don't know the extent of your exposure. But let's say Reuven stole a field from Shimon, and Reuven sold it to Levi, Levi improved it, and so now the, the property is, is seized from Levi, when Shimon comes to collect the property, he's going to collect the uh, the principal from from property that secured So and he's going to collect the shevach the improvements that that Levi did to the land. He's going to collect it from Reuven's only his unsecured property. So so basically, if that's the case, Nema, why is he able to do that? Why don't we say well, Nisa only caused it that that document never should have been written, so he can't collect it at all? Where he says no, Hachi Ashta, it's not the same thing. Hasam. Because this was the Gemara we had earlier that if a person sells a document, sells a uh, sells a stolen property, he still intends to eventually acquire it. Awesome, because there, whether it's because he doesn't want to be called a robber, or or whether it's because he wants people to believe him, he's going to Mephias Lomari Mukim Wilashtari. Reuven is going to that document has the potential to be a good document because Reuben's going to go to Levi and he's going to try and either buy the property from Shimon outright and thereby and thereby prove that it's a valid document. But uh, um, and but here in this case, um, uh, uh, like here, the only reason why uh, why uh, in the case back that we started with. Shimon was trying to get out of having to let Reuben keep the property, and so he gave it to his son. So this co- whole contract is a fraud. So therefore, we're not going to be able to collect from it from Nechaz and Mishubadim. You can't collect it from property that there's a lien on it. Okay, so now we're up to the Mishnah. Mishnah says, Aim Poskin. Now this is a Mishnah that we had in our in our very beginning of Ezu and Nashah. We had it 10 days ago already. And so we're talking about the case of, we had it several times in our chapter, So what this means is you want to buy right now a future product. You want to buy a product now at a future price. So basically, let's say you want to buy some, some apples and you say, I'm giving you $100 now and you're going to give me the apples six months from now. The problem with this is that there's the possibility that the apples will go way up in value. And so then in effect, you're you're doing it as it, it turns into interest because you're buying the apples that right now are worth $100, but in six months, they could be worth $200. So we have already learned in our track date that there's only two ways to do that. One is if the person has the apples in his possession now. So he could really just give it to you now. He's just keeping them until later. Or two, if there is a fixed price right now, and so therefore he could anyway go out and buy them at that fixed price and give it to you. So it says in our Mishnah, you can't do this future contract unless there's an established price. So the price will, for those apples will be that same price in six months. But if there's a established price, then you can do this future contract. And even though if this guy doesn't have, if the guy you're buying it from, even though he doesn't have it, the other one has it, so you can go and buy it. Let's say, let's say it's the beginning of the harvest season, but then you could buy it from him because, because he he has it in his Gaddish. He has, even though there's no price yet, he has it in his field. And also if he has the graves, if he has the olives, uh, if he has the clay for his uh, for his crafts uh, to make the pots, or the lime to make it uh, the plaster in the in the kiln. And also the manure he has around the whole year, so that you could you could acquire from him because basically uh, he has that already. So the whole year posikimoa 
Meaning to say, even though he doesn't have the manure, but since it's always around, and even though it has a fixed price, he can buy it from other people. Rabbi Yossi says, impost can all zevel on can all these oh zevel. Tanakama is saying he can't buy the manure, he can't give him the money for the manure unless he has it. But he's, Rabbi Yossi, uh, but Tanakama says even if he doesn't have it, all everyone has it. Whereas Rabbi Yossi says no, he has to have it in his possession. Posik imo b'shara gavoa. But we do see that you could say, listen, I'm going to get a few at this price. But if the price drops on these apples, let's say I'm keeping it at this price because that's not interest. There, you're just saying I I want to mitigate my risk. Rabbi Yehuda says, even if you didn't actually stipulate, I'm getting a few at this price. You could always say, give it. You could always say, give me back my money or give me it at this price. So you'd always be allowed to do it. You don't even have to stipulate it. Says the Gemara, I'm Rabbi Yasi, I'm Rabbi Yochanan. In post can all shar b'shuk. You're not allowed to, and this at first class seems to contradict our Mishnah. He says you're not allowed to make a price on the. You're not allowed to do a future contract on the current based upon the current price in the market. So I'm Rabbi Rabbi Zera, Rabbi Yasi, I'm Rabbi Yochanan. I feel kedormus as that, even if it is like this central market. Uh, this central market, even if there's a you know, fixed price in the central market, you still can't do a future contract. So I'm really, so I'm really, no, well, I'm a Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan wasn't talking about a fixed price in the central market. He was talking about Pashuk Shalayaros. He was talking about the market prices of the cities, the low Kfiya Tarayo, which they don't really have a fixed price. That means to say just uh, they're, they're, those prices fluctuate. So the Gemara says, What was the Havamina that said that said you can't do a fixed price in the marketplace? That seems to you can't do a future contract if there's a fixed price in the marketplace. That seems to contradict our Mishnah. Well, if that's the case, according to the Havamina, Rabbi Yochanan's statement seems to contradict our Mishnah. So the Gemara says, "No, Masnisin bechiti da kalvi va'arbi the the mashach tarit feino." Our Mishnah was talking about uh, uh, places where the the wheat was stored in the ships, uh, basically uh, that it, and that price lasts for a really long time. Our Mishnah was talking about where the price is super fixed, as opposed to the markets where it's less. Even even the central market it's not as fixed as if the wheat would be in storage. Tana Rabbanon em poskin on aperes achayete ashar. So we learned in the Brisa, you don't make a fixed price on the fruits unless, unless until the market, we say, you're not allowed to make a fixed price in the markets until, the, you're not allowed to do a future contract until there is a fixed price in the markets. But once there's a fixed price, post then you can do a fixed contract, because then you can do a future contract. Because even though this person doesn't have, even though the guy you're giving the money to doesn't have, somebody else has to, you can always buy it. But let's say, but let's say the new grain was going for four of Yishanos Mishalos, and the old grain was going for three. Meaning, say the old grain was more expensive because it's drier already. You have to wait for the fixed price to come out for both of them. Meaning to say that the old grain is also going to be selling at that price. Because then, he can make the fixed price, even though he doesn't have the old ones, because he, it's 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 established. Are you all kutos me arbo ko adam mishalosh? Let's say the lakutos. That's what the people, the poor people, are gathering up, and that was really uh, inferior produce. So that was going for cheaper, and the regular the regular prices were more expensive. Then in post kenachi yatsa shal loket umochor. You have to wait for the fixed price for both of them. I'm Rav Nachman. Post kukutos kishal kutos. Rav Nachman says no. You're allowed to make the fixed price just for the lakutos. Uh, do a future contract for the lakutos according to the the, the market of the lakutos. So I'm only Rav Nachman. Mashna locate the why do we say if he's making the fixed price if he's making a future contract with lakutos why can you do it even though. It's not a regular price. Because if he doesn't have, he can go buy it from his friend. So uh, also Balabais could go and purchase it from there. So if that's the case, uh, we could say it's as though he established. So everybody should be able to do it. So, 
So the says, no, buy a zero bay mil so amazing from the Lako. No, a regular person is not going to buy from the Lakutos because it's inferior quality. Buy the same amount that you have Zuzu Baalbayas, a peri shop area. Also, somebody who is going to bring money to the Baalbayas, he, he's not going to want to buy this Lakuto. So therefore the Baalbayas can't can't say, oh, you buy with me on a future contract because I could always get it from the Lakutos because nobody would actually do business that way. Amar of Shesh, Amar of Huna, in Woven al Shar Shabashok. So now, actually, this is, the, this is the next piece, which will start for uh, tomorrow's daf. So we'll do that at 12 o'clock today. We'll say, uh, we'll, say uh, we'll stop the recording here. If anybody has any questions, happy to.